Hello and welcome to the bonus episode of this 10 days of Photoshop course. In this video, you will discover some essential design principles, but also color and typography terms. The principles of design are a set of rules that designers use in order to create visually pleasing work in an organized and functional way. So, if you want to create successful design pieces in your company or to your clients, you need to understand the rules that make it work. Now that you are aware of the impact of knowing the principles, let's talk about some of them. Let's start with composition or layout. Composition, also known as layout, refers to the strategic arrangement of design elements to form a cohesive and visual captivating image. It involves carefully placing various elements like text, images and graphics to achieve a unified and harmonious wall. Within a composition, you have the freedom to employ diverse principles of design allowing you to craft visually appealing work that not only catches the eye but also serves a functional purpose by delivering an effective and well-structured layout. Let's move to balance. Balance refers to the distribution of visual weight in a composition. There are two types of balance, symmetrical and asymmetrical. Symmetrical balance occurs when elements are evenly distributed on either side of an imaginary center line, creating a sense of stability and formality. Take a moment to examine the Nintendo Switch logo. Notice how the designers made a conscious decision to slightly reduce the size of one side of the emblem to maintain a sense of balance in the overall image. This clever adjustment was necessary because solid colors tend to occupy a different amount of space compared to outlines. Now, let's take a look at the Apple website featuring the iPhone as an example. It beautifully demonstrates that symmetrical balance in graphic design doesn't necessarily entail mirroring the exact elements on each side of the page. Instead, the designers achieve balance by using reflective imagery that showcases different sides of the phone. Although the content on each side is different, both assets carry equal visual weight, creating an harmonious and balanced composition. Now, shifting our attention to this poster, let's imagine drawing a line right down in the middle. What do you observe? The two sides of the poster are either identical or very closely resembling each other. This symmetrical balance adds a sense of stability and equilibrium to the design. It ensures that the visual elements on both sides carry equal importance, resulting in a visual pleasing and well-structured composition. Achieving balance in design involves ensuring that each element carries an equal visual weight. This way everything appears evenly distributed across the page or space. It's all about creating an harmonious composition where no single element dominates the visual hierarchy, resulting in a visual pleasing and well-proportioned design. Now, a symmetrical balance involves the strategic arrangement of different visual elements to create a sense of equilibrium, often resulting in a more dynamic and engaging composition. On the other hand, a symmetrical balance allows for more creative freedom by using contrasting elements to achieve balance. Take a moment to explore this image from HubSpot website, a prime example of utilizing a symmetrical balance in design. Here, you'll notice how the image of a person positioned on the right side of the screen counterbalances the presence of fonts and buttons on the left side. This deliberate arrangement ensures that the visual weight is evenly distributed, creating an harmonious composition. By strategically placing elements of different sizes, shapes and colors, this design achieves a dynamic equilibrium that captivates the viewer's attention. Moving on to Unity, Unity in design refers to the seamless harmony and coherence that exists amongst various elements. It involves establishing a strong connection between different components, resulting in a sense of oneness and visual cohesion. To achieve unity, it is crucial to maintain consistency in the use of colors, typography and graphic styles throughout your design. When these elements work together in harmony, they reinforce the overall message and enhance the viewer's understanding and appreciation of your design. Consider employing consistent color palette that complements your message or brand identity, ensure that your choice of fonts and typography aligns with the desired tone and purpose of your design. By adhering to a cohesive style and visual language, you also create a unified and impactful design that leaves a lasting impression. 
Let's take a closer look at Coca-Cola, a prime example of how visual unity can elevate a brand's image. One of the defining characteristics of Coca-Cola is its iconic red color, which serves as a prominent visual element throughout the brand's website and overall identity. Every page of Coca-Cola's website features this distinct shade of red along with various other design elements like buttons that users interact with. By consistently incorporating the same hues of red and white across all branding materials, both online and offline, Coca-Cola reinforces its brand image and resonates with its target audience. Even in cases where color need to vary, such as distinguishing between different cola flavors, Coca-Cola maintains unity by employing consistent font choices. This cohesive approach to design enhances this brand visual impact and reinforces its identity in the mind of consumers. Now let's delve into the world of Squarespace, where each page has its unique content and specific focus. Despite this diversity, the company manages to maintain a sense of unity throughout consistent font choices, spacing and proximity from one page to another. You'll also notice elements of repetition on the Squarespace website. The positioning of the menu and the company logo remains consistent on every page, ensuring easy navigation for customers to access the home page or explore different sections of the Squarespace site. Furthermore, the grid style alignment of components on Squarespace pages serves as a visual guide, clearly indicating the connections and separations between various elements within the design. This deliberate arrangement not only adds structure but also enhances the user experience by providing a visual hierarchy and organization. Now let's move to contrast. Contrast plays a crucial role in design by juxtaposing distinct visual elements to captivate the viewer's attention and emphasize key aspects on your composition. It can be achieved throughout a myriad of techniques such as variations in colors, size, shape, texture or value. By strategically implementing contrast, you guide the viewer's gaze, highlighting focal points and establishing a clear hierarchy within your design. Let's analyze some examples. On the Microsoft homepage, contrast is achieved throughout the use of vibrant colors, for instance, the bright yellow color stands out and complements the overall color scheme of the web design, immediately capturing the viewer's attention. Additionally, different sizes of typography are employed strategically to guide the viewer's focus towards the most important content on the page. Turning our attention to MailChimp, contrast in typography is employed to create a clear distinction between headline content and the rest of the copy. Headlines are displayed in a bold serif font, instantly conveying authority and grabbing the reader's attention. In contrast, the remaining text is present in a softer sans serif typeface, ensuring readability and a smooth re reading experience. Furthermore, MailChimp cle cleverly utilizes formatting techniques such as bolding to emphasize specific pieces of text guiding the reader's attention after they have absorbed the headlines. Emphasis Emphasis is a powerful design technique that enables you to establish a focal point or center of interest within your composition. It serves as a visual cue that directs the viewer's attention to the most critical elements or messages you want to convey. By strategically employing techniques such as size, color, contrast or placement, you can guide the viewer's gaze and establishing a clear visual hierarchy. Look at this case on the Asana website that employs the clever use of white space and proximity to accentuate the importance of buttons throughout their interface. Notably, these buttons deviate from the surrounding background and text by adopting an opposing color scheme. Instead of the conventional dark text against a white backdrop, we are presented with white text against a dark background, creating a deliberate visual departure from the overall design flow. Now, the Dropbox website incorporates several elements of emphasis to captivate the customer's attention and provide essential information about the service. One notable example is the presence of an animation displayed within an eye-catching orange block, which stands in stark contrast to the surrounding color palette. This animation serves as a powerful tool to further emphasize key details as it breaks away from the static nature of the other graphics on the page. 
By introducing dynamic movement and visual interest, the animation effectively draws the viewer's gaze and creates a focal point, ensuring that the indeed message stand out. Now let's move on to repetition. Repetition is all about maintaining consistency and harmony within your design. By consistently using specific visual elements such as colors, shapes, patterns or all other design elements, you establish a strong sense of unity, reinforce the overall theme and cultivate a distinct visual identity. Repetition plays a crucial role in creating a cohesive and aesthetically pleasing composition. Think of repetition as a powerful tool to introduce consistency and rhythm into your design. By incorporating recurring elements like shapes or patterns, you establish a visual motive that runs throughout your composition. This repetition can be observed in various aspects, including typography, graphics or even spacing. By repeating these elements, you infuse a sense of familiarity and cohesiveness into your design, enhancing its overall impact. In this hardware poster design, a symmetrical typography layout is skillfully employed to showcase the event's detail. By organizing the information in a logical and sequential manner, the design effectively weaves a narrative that guides the user through the content, ensuring a coherent reading experience. Pattern So, pattern refers to the systematic repetition of a specific design element in an organized and consistent manner. By incorporating patterns into a design, you can introduce captivating visual interest, establishing a rhythm flow and add texture to your composition. Patterns can be created through the repetition of shapes, lines or motifs, contributing to a sense of visual order and structure. Crafted by the renowned design firm Lander, the city of Melbourne's branding showcases a captivating interplay of distinct patterns revolving around a recurring shape. The emblematic M, representing Melbourne, takes center stage across various the branding elements employed by the city. Yet, the creative vision extends beyond a single motive as a diverse range of patterns comes into play, each strategically chosen to accentuate different facets and unique personalities of the urban landscape. Moving on to rhythm, think of rhythm as the visual dance and motion within a design. It emerges when visual elements repeat or progress in a deliberate pattern. Rhythm guides the viewer's gaze and evokes a sense of balance and liveliness. Imagine rhythm as the pulse or groove of your design. It can be achieved through the repetition of shapes, lines or patterns. Consistent spacing between elements or alternating their sizes can also contribute to the rhythm. Take a look at the Buffer website for a glimpse of rhythm's potential in graphic design. As you navigate through its pages, you'll encounter captivating instances of rhythm and repetition. These intentional design choices draw your attention and underscore the significance of design elements. Movement Now, movement in design embodies the essence of motion and action, delivering an impression of dynamic energy. By skillfully employing techniques like lines, curves and suggested movement, you can breathe life into your design and captivate the viewer's attention. Movement has the power to draw focus and infuse your composition with captivating allure. Implied movement comes to life through strategic element placement and the utilization of vibrant imagery. Fiesta in Figueres, created by the renowned artist Salvador Dali, exemplifies the masterful utilization of color to evoke a sense of movement. The vibrant yellow hues juxtaposed against the deep blue backdrop establish a focal point at the center of the bustling crowd, instantly capturing our attention. Moreover, Dali employs leading lines to guide our gaze along a carefully crafted path pathway. Now let's move to proportion. Proportion in the realm of design encompasses the interplay between various elements in relation to their size, scale and quantity. It is the art of achieving equilibrium and visual harmony within a composition. A deep understanding of proportion is paramount in graphic designs that are pleasing to the eye. Proportion holds the key to establishing a cohesive relationship among the elements in your design. 
It involves carefully considering the size of each element in relation to others and the overall space they occupy. In this instance, a magazine layout can observe the designer's deliberate manipulation of text proportions. The regular text maintains consistency across all columns while strategically incorporating larger text pieces that demand our attention. Now let's shift our focus to another magazine print as our second example. Here we can immediately find our gaze drawn to the captivating image. In this particular case, the designer prioritizes creating a visual impact through the image, placing it in the spotlight while allowing the accompanying text to assume a supporting role. Now let's talk about harmony and variety. Harmony and variety go hand in hand when it comes to crafting visually captivating designs. Harmony refers to the cohesive use of similar elements and styles throughout the composition, fostering a sense of unity and coherence. On the other hand, variety adds intrigue and prevents monotony by incorporating contrasting elements. Striking the right balance between harmony and variety is key to achieve a visually appealing and engaging design. Let's take a look at an example website below. At first glance, it may seem like a collection of disparate elements, but upon closer examination, you'll notice the deliberate use of similar fonts, shapes, colors, and lines. These shared elements create an harmonious composition that ties the design together. Now, shift your focus to the Trello homepage. Here, you'll witness the power of variety at play. The positioning of different elements like the people in the illustrated graphics is purposefully varied to evoke a sense of motion and dynamism. Color are strategically employed to convey distinct ideas of reliability and creativity, adding visual interest and depth to the overall composition. Now that you know some design principles, let's talk about colors. Colors plays a fundamental role in visual design and understanding the principles of color theory is essential for creating harmonious visual compositions and conveying the desired message. So, let's start with the primary colors. Primary colors are the three basic tones from which all the colors are created. In traditional color model, the primary colors are red, blue and yellow. These colors cannot be obtained by mixing other colors. Think of primary color as the building blocks for other colors. Just as red, blue and yellow are used to create all other colors, you can use these three colors to create any other color combination. Moving on to secondary colors. The secondary colors are obtained by equal mixing of primary color. In the traditional color model, the secondary colors are green, yellow plus blue, orange, red plus yellow and purple, red plus blue. When you mix yellow and blue in equal proportion, you get the color green. Similarly, the mix of red and yellow creates orange, while the mix of red and blue results in purple. Moving on to tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are obtained by mixing a primary color with a secondary color. This creates a wider range of colors. Now, moving on to the color wheel. The color wheel is indeed a visual representation of colors organized in a circle which helps us to understand the relationship between different colors and facilitates color combinations. In a typical color wheel, the arrangement of colors starts with yellow, followed by orange, red, violet, blue and green, forming a continuous cycle of colors. Each color gradually transitions into the next. By drawing a line throughout the center of the color wheel, we can separate the warm colors, red, oranges and yellows, from the cool colors, blue, greens and purples. This division helps us distinguish between color temperatures and can be useful in creating color schemes or understanding the psychological effects of different color groups. Now let's talk about some color combinations. There are several ways to combine colors to create visual harmony. Some common examples are monochromatic. So monochromatic color schemes are based on a single color and utilize different shades and tints of that color to create an harmonious and unified look. This color scheme lacks contrast since it primarily focuses on variations of a single hue. However, it often results in a clean and polished aesthetic. One advantage of a monochromatic scheme is its flexibility in adjusting the darkness and lightness of the chosen color. 
allowing for easy customization and achieving desired visual effects. In this picture here, the incorporation of blues and purples in the monochromatic blueberry-inspired template adds a striking visual appeal. The various shades of blue and purple complement each other and create a sense of depth and contrast while remaining with the same color family. Each shade builds upon the text, resulting in a cohesive and captivating design that captures the essence of blueberries. Despite using variation of a single color, the template stands out and maintains visual interest throughout the skillful arrangement of shades within the blue and purple spectrum. Moving on to analogous, analogous color schemes involve selecting a main color and pairing it with the two colors adjacent to it on the color wheel. If desired, you can also incorporate two additional colors found next to, to the other two colors, creating a five color scheme instead of just three. Analogous color schemes are known for their harmonious and cohesive look, as they do not rely on high contrasting colors. They are often used to create softer and less contrasting designs, such as those inspired by autumn or spring colors. For example, in the image on the right, the eco-friendly women's health company Your Day employs an analogous color scheme consisting of pastels and hearty tones. This choice creates a soothing and visual pleasing effect, enhancing the overall aesthetic of the design. Let's move to complementary. Now, a complementary color scheme relies on using two colors that are directly opposite each other on the color wheel, along with relevant tints or shades of those colors. The complementary color schemes offers the highest level of color contrast, which can create visually striking and dynamic de designs. However, it's important to use complementary colors thoughtfully to avoid overwhelming the viewer. Typically, it's best to choose one color as a dominant hue and use the second color as accents or highlights in your design. This approach maintains a sense of balance while still leveraging the power of complementary colors. Complementary color schemes are particularly effective for charts and graphs as the high contrast helps emphasize important data points and key takeaways. By strategically using complementary colors, you can enhance the viewer's the visual impact and clarity of your information graphics. If you take a look at the logo Pepper Power, you may notice the dominance of two opposite colors, red and green. Now, let's talk about some color terms to add into your vocabulary. SMIC and RGB. If you ever played around with color on any computer program, you've probably seen a module that listed RGB or SMIC colors with some numbers next to the letters. SMIC stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and key, the black color. Those also happen to be the colors listed on your ink cartridges for your printer. That's no coincidence. RGB color models, on the other hand, are designed for electronic displays, including computers. RGB stands for red, green and blue, and it's based on the additive color model of light waves. This means the more color you add, the closer you get to white. Grayscale. Grayscale is a monochromatic palette that consists of various shades of gray. It is often used to create a minimalist and sophisticated look in design. In grayscale, an image is composed of different shades of grey, ranging from pure white to pure black. Using grayscale can be an effective way to simplify an image and focus on its composition, textures and shapes without the distraction of color. It can also evoke a sense of nostalgia or add a timeless quality to a design. Moving on to opacity. Opacity refers to the level of transparency or the degree to which an element allows light to pass through it. It is a property that can be applied to various design elements, such as images, shapes or text. When an element has a lower opacity, it becomes more transparent, hollowing objects or elements behind it to be partially visible. This can create interesting visual effects and layering in designs. Now, saturation. Saturation refers to the intensity or purity of a color. It determines how vibrant and vivid a color appears. A highly saturated color is rich and intense, while a desaturated color appears muted or washed out. Hue. Exactly. 
hue refers to the purest form of a color, without any tint added white or shade added black, it represents the specific position of a color on the color wheel. In the context of, a, of the color wheel, every color can be considered a hue. For example, blue, yellow and red are all used. Other colors such as green, orange and purple are also used. Now let's move to shades, tints and tones. Shades, tints and tones are variations of hues that results from the addition of white, black or grey. They provide artists and designers with a rather range of colors and hollow for more versatility and control in their creations. Shades are produced by adding black to a hue, resulting in a darker and more subdued version of the original color. The more black is added, the deeper the shade and the darker the color becomes. Shades can evoke a sense of mystery, depth and intensity. Tints are created by adding white to a hue, resulting in a lighter and softer version of the original color. The more white is added, the higher the tint and the lighter the color becomes. Tints are often associated with a sense of delicacy, softness and purity. And lastly, tones. Tones are achieved by adding both black and white or grey to a hue altering its saturation and brightness. Tones create a subtle shift in the intensity of the original color, making it appear more muted, toned down or desaturated. Tones can be useful for creating a more balanced and harmonious color palette. And since we are talking about color palettes, a color palette refers to a set of carefully selected colors that are used in a specific design project, such as a brand identity, website or artwork. The colors in a palette are chosen to work harmoniously with each other and represent the overall aesthetic and personality of the project or brand. A well-designed color palette ensures visual consistency and helps create a cohesive and unified work. Now lastly, let's talk about typography. Typography plays a fundamental role in a design, serving as a powerful tool for conveying information, invoking emotions and creating a visual impact. It goes beyond mere letter forms and encompasses the art and science of arranging type in a visually appealing and effective manner. Typography choices, such as font selection, size, spacing and alignment, can significantly influence the overall tone, readability and message of a design. Whether it's a logo, website, poster or publication, typography sets the visual hierarchy guiding the viewer's attention and organizing content. Let's start with serif versus sans serif. In typography, the term serif refers to a small extra stroke or line attached to the end of each character in a typeface. Fonts that have these extra strokes are called serif typefaces. The presence of serifs in a typeface can make the text easier to read, as the additional strokes guide the eyes and create a smooth flow between characters. Serif typefaces are commonly used for body copy in printed materials because they are considered elegant and highly legible. On the other hand, sans serif refers to typefaces that do not have these small strokes or serifs at the end of characters. Sans serif typefaces have a clear and more modern appearance. They are widely used for digital displays as they are easier to render on screens and have a crisp and straightforward aesthetic. Now let's move to script fonts. Script fonts, as the name suggests, are based on handwriting or calligraphy styles. They often mimic the fluid strokes and varied widths found in handwritten scripts. Script typefaces can be historically or modern and are commonly used for decorative or display purposes rather than the extended blocks of text. Slab serif font also known as slab or Egyptian typefaces, are characterized by thicker and heavier serifs compared to regular serif fonts. The serif in slab serif fonts are usually square, angular or rounded, depending on the design. Slab serif typefaces have a bold and sturdy appearance and are often used for headings, titles and emphasis. Monospace 
The monospace fonts have a fixed width, meaning that each character occupies the same amount of horizontal space. This is a contrast to proportional fonts, where the width of characters can vary. Monospace fonts are commonly used in situations where precise alignment is necessary, such as coding, typewriters or tabular data. Now kerning and tracking. Kerning and tracking are both spacing adjustments in typography. Kerning refers to the adjustment of space between specific pairs of characters to create visually pleasing and balanced spacing. Certain combinations of letters may create awkward or uneven gaps and kerning helps adjust to the space between them. In the other hand, tracking refers to the adjustment of overall spacing between a group of letters or characters, affecting the spacing consistently across the entire selection. Tracking is useful for creating the overall density and appearance of text blocks. Leading is the vertical space between lines of text. It determines the distance between multiple lines to ensure legibility and readability. Sufficient leading allows the lines of text to breathe and prevent them from appearing too cramped or tightly packed. Weight in font design, weight refers to the thickness or heaviness of a character relative to its height. Different weights within a typeface family can include normal, bold, light or extra bold variations. Having various weights available in a typeface allows designers to create visual hierarchy and emphasis within their designs. Point size is a measurement used to describe the height of a font character. It is typically measured in points, with 72 points equaling 1 inch or 2.54 cm. The point size determines the overall size of the character and affects the readability and visual impact of the text. Uppercase and lowercase refer to the main cases of letters in the Latin alphabet. Uppercase, also known as capital or caps, refers to the larger capital letters typically used in, at the beginning of sentences for proper names and for emphasis. Lowercase letters are the non-capital letters used for the majority of text. Now, small caps are uppercase characters that are shorter in height compared to regular uppercase letters. Small caps are designed to harmonize with lowercase letters. Lauren Ipsum is a placeholder text commonly used in design projects it helps showcase the design without meaningful content until the final copy is available. Readability and legibility are important aspects of typography. Readability refers to how blocks of text are arranged on a page, while legibility pertains to the distinguishable of characters. Widows and orphans are terms used in typesetting. A widow is a short line of a word at the end of a paragraph or column causing excessive white space between paragraphs at the bottom of a page. An orphan is a short line or a single word at the beginning of a color or page. And there you have it! I hope you enjoyed this video. By applying these visual design principles, you can create compelling and effective designs for social media, print, posters, flyers and e newsletters. Remember to adapt and tailor these principles to suit the specific requirements and constraints of each medium, while keeping your target audience and overall message in mind. Thanks for watching. If you like it, this series of 10 days of Photoshop, please leave your like and comment down below. I would love to know your feedback. So thank you and have a great day and I see you in the next video.